you can add CSS to everything and you can style the whole site exactly how you want to. So, so now we've had a look at the CSS, we've had a look at panels, we've had a look at mini panels, we've touched on uh, templating and how you can template this content area for each different content type in here. The final thing to look at is panels everywhere. Now, panels everywhere is also created by Merlin of Chaos. Uh, it's a great module because it takes the whole panels concept one stage further. And that is, if panels deals with this area of the site, it deals with the content, panels everywhere can now deal with everything else. So it can deal with the header, it can deal with the menu, uh, it can deal with the these badges, the footer, it can deal with the whole site template and where everything lives and um, where where you can, so you can put anything on on the whole site. So you install it in much the same way, you copy it to uh, the modules directory, you then install it, I'll just show you the modules page. C tools uh, is going to be installed anyway for panels. You're also going to want on the C tools as a side note you're going to want to have views content panes enabled so that you can use uh, the views in, in your panels. Then we scroll down to panels. We can see we've got panels in, uh, installed and going, mini panels is installed and going and panels everywhere is installed and going. So that's how you install it. After you install it um, you'll have an extra option if you go to site building and you go to panels and you go to settings uh, everywhere. Sorry it's a bit hard to see on there because I've got the transparency down. On these settings you can see we have some checkboxes which you can go through and tick. Uh, the first one is enable panels everywhere site template. Uh, this means that you want to use panels everywhere to template your site you're happy for it to override the existing template and use its own settings to do the job. Um, the second one is enable panels everywhere site template for the admin theme I always have that checked because I want to use the same theme uh, whether I'm doing admin or whether I'm looking at the site. Uh, the third one is provide a sample variant for the site template. This is always a good, a good starting point so it's a good idea to check this um, you can start from building from a certain place um, instead of starting from scratch. So this is uh, all you need, really need to worry about. So I also click overriding the page templates but I don't click um, enable panels everywhere um, on a per theme basis because I don't have lots of themes running. And once that's all done you then have a, an extra option on your panels dashboard and that's this thing here, the default site template. So this is the panels everywhere temp templating area. Let's have a look and see how it, how it lays out the site. So we can see this is the sample variant that we've started with, it's called sample variant and it's the one that I've changed so that my site looks, um, look, looks like it does. Very similar setup to the rest of panels, we have a summary um, we have a general where you can name it. Uh, this box is interesting here. This says disable Drupal blocks and regions. This should be ticked because what Panels Everywhere does is it overrides the way that Drupal loads content onto the page. Um, usually when Drupal loads blocks onto the page it loads all of the blocks both visible and invisible and then it chooses which ones to display. Now if you've got a lot of blocks on a site this can be quite a performance issue if you've got a lot of traffic and a lot of blocks you've got a lot of things showing and hiding you're, you're loading a lot of extra data which you don't actually need so what the um, Panels Everywhere system does is it overrides that and it chooses which um, which things to load and loads them rather than loading everything all at once. Next you have selection rules um, for the most part I never bother adding selection rules, I actually do that in over in the panels section. If you wanted to, you could add selection rules here, for example, user role. This would allow you to create a completely different template 
for example for an anonymous role or a completely different template for an editor role or authenticated role um, you have all the usual options that you would normally have for um, the panel setup so you can also have taxonomy term, taxonomy vocabulary um, string URL path you can even create lots of different templates here for every different URL path that you go to in general though I tend to keep this uh, free and I usually use the selection rules more in the panels area rather than the panels er uh, everywhere area so let's have a look at the layout the layout I've gone for is just a single column because I just want a single column website um, with panels creating all the other columns so now I click on content this is the area where you'll configure everything to to be so for example first off we have the header this is a mini panel um, if we have a look at the home page or we can see on every page we have the header here the mini panel it's two columns the logo on one column and the text and the phone number on the other column so that's just put at the top of the page the next we have the primary links that's the main menu that goes below so the easy thing the easy thing about panels everywhere is that it's just drag and drop and add content when you like so for example you can add content you can choose views you can choose mini panels node elements taxonomy term elements and you can also choose new custom content you can also move things around for example if I was to move the header down to there for example and click update I can then click save and if I go back to here click refresh I now see that my headers disappeared all the way down to there um, it's really really easy to move stuff around and to design and you get very very quick results so let's move that back up to there click update and save so some of the extra things that the panels everywhere adds to the mix is that it adds when you add content you have uh, the page elements area now these are all the sorts of things like breadcrumbs, uh, mission statement, page content, page header, messages, um, page title, uh, all those sorts of things. So you can add all of those in here and you can theme them separately so that they all behave uh, in a certain way. Um, I've gone for a custom header because I preferred using a mini panel as a header the only actual page elements I've used here are the tabs, uh, the page messages and the page content. So the tabs are hidden because they also appear in the page messages. Uh, the page messages are just your standard Drupal messages which turn up and also help. Um, page content, now this is, if I just refresh that, everything in this box we talked about earlier that gets formatted by panels so that all goes into the page content area uh, I've got badges and badges 2 that's the two mini panels at the bottom 1 and 2 and I've also got footer uh, the footer is another mini panel and this footer is, is like this so you can use this sort of this uh, pa panels everywhere to quickly create um, the sort of expansive footers you see on many sites where they have lots of links um, they have a link to the sitemap for example they have contact information some have quote forms um, copyright information you see it more and more that the large sites are having a larger and larger footer um, this is a very easy method to have that large footer with lots of different columns and, and layouts just like just how you like and then to insert it into this um, into this template using panels everywhere so the main thing with this is how can I get it to look how I want it to look and again we come back to CSS um, if we have a look at this website we can see that it's um, a certain distance wide and it's centered in the middle of the page if you go like this it stays centered in the middle of the page 
I've actually made this website 960 pixels wide because that's the kind of standard size that that uh, many designers go for. Um, if we have a look at the CSS, for example, the page content, we do exactly the same as we did before. We click on the little cog, we go to CSS, and I've called this panel dash content. So on the CSS file, we can look down and we can find I've made this thing panel dash content and uh, the wording I've used is hashtag panel dash content dot panel dash pane you then open the parentheses and then you add your styling content so for example the background color is white this is white here the I've also had the border left and the border right this is 10 pixels and this is the thin strip of color here and this thin strip of color here. Um, next, if we go to next, if we if we look at the margin, we've got minus nine at the top, and then we've got auto, and then we've got ten. So what we're looking at here is the minus nine pulls it upwards in the minus nine pixels. The ten adds a little margin at the bottom which is obviously something I needed here but the auto is for the left and for the right and that means that it's centered when you have auto it means uh, it automatically works out the margin on the left and the right so it's centered and to get it working in that way you also have to have a width so panel content has got a width of 9, 960 so we have a width of 960 and we have a margin of auto on this side and auto on this side. This keeps it centered. So when we look at the template, we've added this same sort of CSS to everything. We can look at CSS properties for the header. It's panel header. Now this is a CSS applied to the whole header mini panel. Don't forget that you can also add little bits of CSS actually into the individual elements of the header panel. But for the whole header panel, we have added uh, this bit here, panel header. Um, again, we've got the margin, and we've got left and right margin of being auto, which when you set the width means that you find the header is located in the middle of the page. And if we change that, we can actually see that these are all different elements that are made to look the same. Panel header, if we include if we increase the width, we can see that it's this is a separate part of the site. This is the header. Next down we have the um menu and obviously the main content. But because we make it all the same size and we add the padding and we add the right widths and we make it centered with the margins it all looks like one page so this is basically it this is our page laid out we can add whatever we like to there but it's a good idea to add things like page content because otherwise you won't be able to see anything um, page messages